Frank Reich's not calling it a revenge game, but he does admit that he's highly motivated to beat the Colts on Sunday. We'll break it all down on this Locked On NFL Crossover Thursday edition of Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to another edition of the Locked On Panthers and Locked On Colts podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Julian Council, the host of Locked On Panthers. He is the host of Locked On Colts, Zach Hicks. And again, we're part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Listen to our shows every Monday through Friday. Your team every day is our motto here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow each of our shows for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter at Julian Council. And follow Zach on Twitter at Zach Hicks 2 And make sure to check out our friends over at Prize Picks, who are our Crossover Thursday episode sponsor. The easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase lock. Locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100 on Sunday afternoon. The Carolina Panthers, who are finally with a win at one and six, will welcome to town the Indianapolis Colts, who are three and five, coming off of a loss, three straight losses. Actually, what I've seen, Gardner Minshew will be the starting quarterback as Anthony Richardson is out for the season. And that would have been a nice matchup between two rookie quarterbacks like we saw last week here in Carolina. But Zach, this could be. What people want to dub as a Frank Reich revenge game on Sunday afternoon. How you doing, man? Doing good, doing good. And I love talking Frank Reich, uh, even if it is a revenge game type thing. You know, maybe it's an Indianapolis Colts revenge game, which I don't know what we're getting revenge for. We're the ones who fired him, I guess. But, uh, you know, Frank Reich, however this turns out, I do want to say before we start this, love Frank Reich, love covering him for years. Great guy. Um, I really wish you guys had more success this season, obviously. But, you know, I'm happy to see Frank Reich again this weekend. Yeah, so far, things haven't gone as planned here in Carolina with this new coaching staff of Bryce Young as a starting quarterback. But I think Sunday potentially uh, could have been a a turning point. And Frank, he was asked about it multiple times on Wednesday afternoon, saying that, yes, he's highly motivated to win this game, but there's no vengeful outlook towards Jim or say in the organization that it's just another game, but he understands that there's a different dynamic. He says both can be true. So Frank trying to be ultra political when talking about the game, but it's exciting to see all the parallels. I mean, you got Frank who knows all the players, Shane Steichen who interviewed here in Carolina was with Frank Reich back in San Diego when he was the offensive coordinator. So it'll be a nice little homecoming for him. Parks Frazier as well, who was up there in Indianapolis a couple years ago. He's the passing game coordinator. So we know the whole Frank Reich revenge game. If you want to even call it, that's going on on Sunday, but what's the biggest storyline right now for the Colts heading into this week nine matchup here in Carolina? Yeah, you know, if you would ask me before the season, it would have been about how awesome this QB matchup is going to be, the two rookie quarterbacks facing off and how excited we would get. But now, you know, even with Gardner Minshew starting, the Colts offense has been pretty good. They're sixth in the NFL in points per game. They're they're scoring at a really high rate. They're eighth in explosives on offense. The real reason why the Colts are losing these last couple of games, why they've dropped three in a row, is their defense. And yes, you can make excuses for the Jaguars game. You could make excuses for the Browns game that the Colts offensive turnovers kind of limited their defense getting off the field. There are no excuses to be made for what just happened against New Orleans. There is no excuses whatsoever. They allowed 35 plus points again the last three weeks, but it obviously came to a head last week against the Saints where Derek Carr had 11 yards per attempt. Derek Carr of all quarterbacks, Derek Carr, who's bottom five in the NFL on yards per attempt going into that matchup had 11 yards per attempt. The Colts' pass rush was a train wreck. Their coverage was a train wreck. Their safeties were blowing assignments. Like There was just nothing positive from the Colts' defense this past game, especially, again, where the Colts face another top-10 defense on the other side, and their offense still put up 27 points, but their defense could not get it done on the other side of the ball. The biggest story for the Colts is can their defense actually figure something out against a Carolina offense that has not had a ton of success this year. They're going against Frank Reich, who knows this defense, knows the players, knows Gus Bradley, obviously, from last year when they worked together. So, you know, they do have some things kind of going against them. But again, if there's, there's, be- there's no better time for a get right game than this Panthers team that just won their first game of the season. They're one in six. Like, I'm not trying to overlook the Panthers because the Colts are losing games too. But 
you need to eventually get things right on defense. You're giving up 35 plus points to a Jaguars offense that's been inconsistent this year to PJ Walker at quarterback against the Browns. And then again, yeah, uh, we all love PJ Walker too. We love him (laughs) out here in Indy as well. But, and then to Derek Carr, again, Derek Carr, 11 yards per attempt. That just can't happen. So the biggest story really is, can this Colts defense find something? Can they find something this week against the Carolina offense that has struggled this season? Has it been injuries that have been the issue for Indianapolis? To a degree. I mean, Grover Stewart, one of the best nose tackles in football, has been suspended for the last six years, going to be suspended for the next couple of weeks. Uh, so he is out. They've lost a lot of corners. Isaiah Rogers Sr. suspended before the year. Uh, they lost Juju Brents to injury, the rookie in the second round they took. They lost Dallas Flowers, their starting corner for the season. So there has been some injuries, but it, it would be just disingenuous to blame it all on injuries. It's just been a bad yeah. stretch. It's been a really bad stretch for this defense. Yeah. And we can relate to that here in Carolina as injuries have really hurt the defense. JC Horn only played the first half, didn't even finish it a week one against the Falcons in that loss. They lost Shaq Thompson, uh, their play caller there in the middle of the defense there at linebacker for the rest of the season because of a broken leg. They've had guys like Von Bell who missed practice again on Wednesday, who's missed the last two games. Xavier Woods came back the other safety last week after missing three games. So the Panthers, they've dealt with that, especially losing corners. Dante Jackson as well. They've seen just a rash of injuries to a unit that we thought was going to be pretty good and went to last week giving up the second most points in the league. And coincidentally, the two teams that are giving the most points up in the league going into last week. The Broncos and the Panthers both were able to go out and come out on top. The Panthers only gave it 13 in that win against your division rivals, the Houston Texans, on Sunday. But the biggest storyline, I think, here in Carolina, it's not just the Panthers finally won a game. And the vibes are a little bit more positive than they were last week. And everyone understands that one in six, this is still a team unlikely to make the playoffs. Although they start winning a couple games, maybe beat Indianapolis on Sunday, have the Bears in a short week next Thursday and Thursday night football. You look at the rest of the division, they're not that far behind in the win loss, as far as the loss column goes from the rest of the division in the NFC South. But I think there is a level of disappointment from the fan base that the Carolina Panthers did not make a move at the trade deadline. I think it's Mike Hay, the Charlotte Observer, mentioned the last time a Frank Reich team had a, had a deadline trade was back when he was with the, Phil, the uh, Eagles, and they traded for Jay Ajayi. So it's not like it's been very often that at the deadline, Frank Reich is going out there looking for uh, um, some players to add or either to go send some players away. And he mentioned that Scott Bitter, the general ra- manager here, that's kind of what he lets him handle. He'll be in, in some of the meetings. Scott will come talk to him. But Frank's really just focused on what he has and what the task at hand is going into the weekend. So there was some talk about Brian Burns potentially being some of the Panthers could trade away. I was opposed to that because the Panthers need more good players, not less good players. And they've already given up Christian McCaffrey and DJ Moore over the course of the last 12 months. So there's no sort of deal there. Some other players like Jeremy Chin, who's currently on IR, they could have traded him, but he's not available because on IR, Shaq Thompson as well. Then Terrace Marshall Jr. wanted to be traded. There was no deal out for him. He played four snaps last week. We'll see if that trend uh, continues now that he's let it be known that he does not want to be here in Carolina. And Dante Jackson could have been another uh, player the Panthers could have moved on from. So I think there's a little de- disappointment knowing what the Panthers gave up last year, or not even last year, a couple months ago, to get Bryce Young number one overall, that they're not able to build towards the future in a season that looks to be headed towards, well, what would be a top 10 draft pick. And only thing that matters at right now is the development of Bryce Young. So that's pretty much the top storyline. But also, Bryce Young had a comeback win last week. It's been a while since we've seen a quarterback the Panther fans truly believed in do that. Sam Darnold was never able to do it back when he was really given the opportunity to be the guy. His last game as Panther, they did have a walk-off win week 18 against the Saints, but it was already over as far as his fate in Carolina. Baker Mayfield never got it done. P.J. Walker, who there wasn't really a belief that he would be the guy. He couldn't get it done. Teddy Bridgewater notoriously could never lead that (laughs) game-tiring, game-winning drive. But Bryce Young, who they gave up a ton for, went out there and did it. So there's some positives there. Well, Panther fans are a little bit disappointed about what the draft compensation they didn't receive at the deadline is. They are a little bit excited about Bryce Young, what he can potentially provide moving forward after uh, getting what could be um, kind of a turnaround drive for him and the organization moving forward to the second half of the season here in Carolina. So, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see. And it's I, I feel bad for you guys that you don't get that. With Anthony Richardson, it's like, for you – what is this season about now for the Indianapolis Colts now that Anthony Richardson is out for the rest of the year and you have a first year head coach in Shane Sykin? It's all about the vibes, man. It's all about the vibes. <laughs> We're just chilling, you know. <laughs> you know, I could go either way with it. Like if we if we win games, you know, you win win a couple games, get to like seven, eight, nine wins. 
all right, cool. Like you're feeling like some good momentum going into the off season with your young coach. But if you bought him out and the three wins is all you get this year, cool. We get Marvin Harrison Jr. Like whatever, you know, we're, we're just kind of chilling here. We, we have our first round pick. I'm sorry you guys don't. So it makes it kind of tougher, you know, the rest of the season, but you know, we can kind of root for wins and losses here, I guess. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Colts can only have one Marvin Harrison. You had That's senior, you can't true. have junior. That would not be fair to the rest <laughs> of the NFL. But uh, unfortunately, Anthony Richardson didn't get an opportunity to play out the entire season. He's a guy that I liked and would have loved to see him here in Carolina, but I'm a fan of Bryce too. So we'll see how these two teams move forward, starting with the matchup on Sunday afternoon. We'll take a quick pause here on the show then come back we'll talk about some of the key matchups and key players that can help decide this matchup between the one and six carolina panthers and three and five indianapolis colts on sunday again this is a locked on nfl crossover edition of locked on panthers and locked on colts we'll be right back here in just a moment whenever the game clock stops that's time to order in with doordash order pizza wings soda burgers or even just buns on doordash and get it all delivered without missing the game score football season's best deals on groceries restaurants retail and more all of your favorite restaurants and stores from retail to grocery are on the app so you can shop everything you need to get game day ready and personally for me zach here in charlotte one of my personal favorites is hawthorne pizza right down the road for me you can get, get some great pizzas there get some wings you can get some subs everything that you want on game day and it goes perfectly with the carolina panthers win stock up on your favorite appetizers and order all your tailgate gear on doordash then get ready to watch your team win get 50 percent off up to a 10 dollars value when you spend 15 dollars or more on your first order when you download the doordash app and enter code lock 23 subject to change terms apply that's 50 percent off up to a 10 dollars value when you spend 15 dollars or more on your first order when you download the doordash app and enter code lock 23 again subject to change terms apply all right, back here on Locked On Panthers and Locked On Colts. It's an NFL, it's a Locked On NFL crossover Thursday brought to you by our friends over at Price Picks, Julian Council, the host of Locked On Panthers. Zach Hicks, the host of Locked On Colts, breaking down the Carolina Panthers Indianapolis Colts matchup here on Sunday afternoon at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. All right, Zach, we've talked plenty about Frank Reich. We've talked a little bit about the two rookie quarterbacks. One we'll get to see on Sunday, one unfortunately we will not get to see. Uh, but let's talk about some of the key matchups, key players that we're looking out for on Sunday afternoon starting off with the Colts what are some of the key matchups that you're looking to see that could help lean the uh, positive direction for the Indianapolis Colts on Sunday yeah you know I think again we're kind of focusing on just one matchup here which is that Colts defense versus that Panthers offense obviously you guys are watching it for Bryce Young and seeing how that progression go but again we're kind of watching just how this Colts defense can respond and and when this Colts defense was playing well early in the season, their front seven was carrying them. Their front seven was stuffing the run. They were getting after the quarterback. At one point, they were like second in the NFL in sacks. They were up there in pressure percentage. They were doing some really good things up front to carry that, that weaker, younger secondary. And we just haven't seen that the last couple of weeks. So the biggest matchup that I'm really excited for in this one, just want to see what the Colts can do, is their pass rush. Can their pass rush get back on track? You know, Derek Carr last week, I think had the fastest time to throw in the NFL it was like 2.2 seconds or 2.1 seconds while still averaging 11 yards per attempt. Again, I can't get over that. Derek Carr, 11 yards per attempt. I'm going to keep saying it here. That's the fourth guys, time. <laughs> I can't. It's crazy. It's, I don't think he's ever thrown it that far before, let alone having it go, go down there multiple times. But, uh, you know, this Colts pass rush needs to just dictate the pace of play. Samson Abukam has been great this year, done some really good things off the edge, a really good free agent signing, but he's gone a little quiet the last couple of weeks. Former first round pick Quiddy Pay really needs to step up his play. He was really good before that concussion back in week three, and then it just hasn't been the same. DeForest Buckner, the veteran, has been fantastic in all phases this year, but it can't just be him. It can't just be him, obviously. Uh, so you really want to see this Colts uh, pass rush really come back to life against the Panthers offensive line that is allowed. I think I think I saw a stat today like by Jonathan Kinsley on social media. I think the, the Panthers like eighth most QB hits allowed in the NFL this year, seventh or eighth. Great. Yeah. Uh, QB hits allowed. It's like 56 on the season at this point, which is quite a lot. And Bryce Young's not one of those quarterbacks where he's going to absorb contact and rip through the contact and throw a pass down the field. You again, he's a smaller, slender quarterback. He's going to get, he's going to get hit and he's going to, you know, get hit and fall back. You know, he's, he's an elusive player, but if you can actually get your hands on him, you can disrupt what he's doing back there. And that's where some of the issues have been for the Panthers this season. So this is a prime opportunity for the Colts pass rush to dictate the pace of play again and really help out this young secondary, not leave them on an Island 
all game long. Because again, we can't have what happened last week. That was that's unacceptable. Uh, I know Bryce Young is is more interesting at least than Derek Carr, but um, yeah, that you just can't have a repeat of last week. The pass rush needs to get home for the Colts, and that's the biggest matchup for the Colts in this matchup or in this game. Yeah. Yeah, and Bryce has shown the ability, uh, like last week, to be able to you know evade the rush and make some plays. And he had an excellent throw to Adam Thielen on a drive where they end up getting Stonewall at the goal line. But he was able to get away from the pressure for the most part on Sunday in that win against uh, the uh, Houston Texans. And it it's a concern here in Carolina for sure. They gave up six sacks on Sunday, and Bryce came out on Wednesday and talked about it's not all on the offensive line. Frank Reich talked about that. I think any smart football person understands that you know sacks are not – an offensive line stat solely. They can be also a quarterback stat, but I feel a lot of the sacks that we saw on Sunday, four of them by my count were on Icky Iquanu, the left tackle who the Panthers took in the first round last year. And the knock on him coming into the draft was that he's great when it comes to run blocking, but he's not the best in pass protection. It's still early in his career, but so far the regression from Icky Iquanu has been surprising. The Panthers offense line's better suited to be the one that they were last year where they were pretty good running the football and fairly good as far as protecting now that Austin Corbett, who came off of the pup list last week, that torn ACL he suffered in week 18 of last year. Now he's back there. He's probably their best offense player last year on what was a bad offense. Taylor Moten's been a consistent player at right tackle, so it's good to have him still there. Then they are, looks like that left guard is going to move forward with Calvin Throckmorton instead of one of the younger players like Chandler Zabal, the fourth round pick at NC State that they started there for a couple weeks, and then Cade Mays, who started there one week. So the Offensive line starting to come together, but there is some concern there at left tackle with Vicky Aquinas. So that's absolutely a matchup I'm also looking out for. But really the one that I'm probably most concerned about and the Carolina Panthers need to do a better job is against the run. And it, it's interesting. I feel like you probably find this interesting that Frank Reich, when he was asked, like, what went wrong in Indianapolis for you? Like, where did things turn? And he didn't mention having five starting quarterbacks in five <laughs> different years. What he mentioned was the inability to run the football, which I just thought was wild. But Jonathan Taylor, as you know, he had his injuries last year, and the Colts offense was pretty inept with Matt Ryan and then going to, oh, God, Sam Ellinger. That's his name. Yeah, Sam Ellinger. But so far, the Colts have run the ball fairly well. Jonathan Taylor back uh, from the whole contract dispute and being healthy. Zach Moss as well. I see that they're ninth, they have the ninth most rushing uh, attack in the NFL so far. They got 12 touchdowns combined, which is fourth most in the league. The Panthers right now are 26 against the run and 28th in yards per carry allowed at 4.7. Last week against the Texans was probably the best they played against the run, but they still gave, gave up 110 yards rushing and 3.7 yards per carry. So 3.7 yards per carry is a full yard better than what they're averaging right now, or at least allowing right now, but they have to be better. Every other opponent they played has rushed for over 130 yards, and that's what I would imagine Indianapolis is going to want to do with their backup quarterback in Gardner Minshew, but still some two good receivers out there in Josh Downs. And in Michael Pittman, but the Panthers have to be able to control the line of scrimmage and stop the run. So that's the matchup I'm absolutely looking forward to on Sunday if the Panthers are going to try and win this game. We talk about matchups. What about players? What are some of the players that you're looking at that can kind of change the tide, turn the tide or for the Indianapolis Colts in their favor on Sunday afternoon? Yeah, I think you and I are on the same wavelength here when we're looking at what the Colts need to do on the offense side of the ball, and that's going to be feeding Zach Moss and feeding Jonathan Taylor in this matchup. Zach Moss, second in the NFL in rushing yards right now, playing some outstanding football, and he's doing that while missing uh, the first, I believe, two two games of the season, or first first game of the season. Uh, so he's second in the NFL in rushing yards after missing the first game of the season. Jonathan Taylor is starting to look like Jonathan Taylor again, and against this Carolina defense that is struggling to stop the run, this should be a big day for both of those players. I mean, last week they combined for over 150 yards rushing on only 23 carries. This could be a really big week against the Carolina Panthers defense for both those running backs. Yeah, and I think two guys who are going to step up to be able to stop the run is Frankie Louvu, who is the NFC Defensive Player of the Week after 12 tackles last week. The dude's a monster. He's going to be a free agent this upcoming year, and he's somebody that the Carolina Panthers are going to really need to hold on to if they want to continue to you know, progress so hard to having a good defense win whole and Derek Brown as well. He's played a ton of snaps there in the middle and the Carolina Panthers really need him to go out there, have a strong day, be able to stop the run because they can't control the line of scrimmage on the defensive side of the ball. Can't stop the run. Uh, really difficult to see how the Carolina Panthers will be able to win this game on Sunday when the Colts come to town. So we talk about the top storylines, we talk about the key matchups, key players. What must go right for the Colts? What must go right for the Panthers if they would like to win or maybe even tie the game on Sunday here <laughs> in Charlotte? I'm Julian Council, the host of Locked On Panthers. He's Zach Hicks, the host of Locked On Colts on this Locked On NFL crossover Thursday. We'll be back to talk about what must go right for each team here in just a moment on Locked On Panthers and Colts. 
All right, Zach, I don't know about you, but I am not always the biggest fantasy sports guy in the world. But when I do play, I go with the prize picks because it's the most fun that I've had winning. And I think all of our listeners will have winning up to 25 times their money this football season. You just select two or more players, pick more or less than their projected stats, and place your entry. Test your skills on prize picks this football season. It's the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. And who doesn't need $250? Prize picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. It's that easy. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports. Sports app. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. All right, back here on Locked On Panthers and on Locked On Colts. It's a Locked On NFL crossover Thursday brought to you by our friends over at Price Picks. Julian Council, the host of Locked On Panthers, and he is Zach Hicks, the host of Locked On Colts. All right, Zach. The Panthers are one and six. The Colts are three and five. Both need some wins. Colts losing three straight. They're still in a wide open division there in the AFC South. And the same could be said about the Panthers in the NFC South, but they have a lot more work to do. And yes, the Colts need to catch up to a Jacksonville Jaguars team that seems to be running away with things here in the first half of the season. What's what, excuse me, must go right for the Indianapolis Colts to win on Sunday. The defense, <laughs> the defense, that's the it. Defense. Just the defense. the defense. Look, again, this Colts offense, they're sixth in the NFL in points per game. They are eighth in explosive plays. They're starting to do a lot of good things with Gardner Minshew at quarterback. They are doing as much as possible as you can possibly do with who they have at quarterback. Again, Gardner Minshew at quarterback, they're still scoring points uh, during this last three game stretch when the Colts defense has allowed 35 plus points in every single game. The Colts offense has scored over 20 in each of those games. They've scored over 20 in every single game this season. The last remaining team to do that this entire uh, NFL season in 2023 so far. And again, with Gardner Minshew at quarterback for most of them. So it really comes down to can this Colts defense get it on track again? On paper, you're looking at this Carolina offense and you're saying, okay, we we can hopefully get something going here. Bryce Young has not been super effective this year. The Panthers offense has just not been that efficient or it has not just been good overall, you know, good overall. So this really should be a get right game for the Colts defense. But on the other side, the Panthers are looking at this as a get right game for their offense because the Colts defense has been that bad. So yes. it really comes down to, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like it really comes down to, what the Colts defense does in this game. Do they bounce back from what they just did last week, that just monstrosity that we saw? Or is that the beginning of a trend? Is that beginning of a defense that is on their last leg and they're about to fall over and the Panthers are going to provide that one final push? You know, I think that is going to be the biggest story and what needs to go right for the Colts is that bounce back game for their defense against the Panthers offense that, again, has struggled this season. Yes, that is very true. The Panthers offense has struggled. And you look at last week, they needed a 15-play, 86-yard drive to bleed out the final 617 of the clock against Houston to win that football game. You look at their total yardage, it was 244. So 86 of the 244 <laughs> came on that final drive. So when they needed it most, they got it done. But if you look at the game in totality, the offense was still not very good. The right. pass protection was still terrible. The rushing attack was still terrible. Receivers still weren't getting open. It's a positive result, finally. But the Carolina Panthers offense still is a work in progress. And that's honestly probably the nicest way you can really put it right now. And for them, I think it's about building off of the momentum from that final drive of last week. You, you look at the Colts. They've been depleted by injuries. They're giving up the most points in the NFL. They have ranked at the bottom of the league and scoring defense as well. They're, they're not good right now. And they have the same issues that the Panthers defense has had when it comes to injuries, but that's only so far of an excuse considering that the Colts have the issues. Panthers have the issues. A lot of teams in the NFL, no one's healthy right now. So you can only use that uh, so much when you look at offenses versus defenses at this point in time in the season. So the Panthers need to find a way where potentially they can find a rushing attack with Chuba Hubbard. He's now taken over as a lead back in place of Miles Sanders, who has been largely ineffective. I've questioned whether he's healthy. Only had two rushing attempts last week for a grand total of zero yards. So hard to see that he's going to be more involved in the offense this week as they want to be probably a little bit more downhill, more physical with Chuba running the ball. That's what Frank Reich said on Monday after his day after press conference. And, you know, Bryce Young showed some signs of, hey, 
this could be the guy long term when he was able to run away from the rush. He was able to make some plays, and his receivers let him down a few times. We saw a drop from DJ Chark. We saw a drop from Hayden Hurst, who, like Miles Sanders, has been largely ineffective so far in this offense. We'll see what Thomas Brown, who's going to be in his second game as a play caller after taking up the play playing role from Frank Reich going into the bye week. We'll see what he's able to cook up against what's been a struggling defense for the Colts uh, all season long. And the second thing for me, you got to let you got to have Gardner Minshew beat you. You can't have Jonathan Taylor and Zach Moss run all over you. They can't dictate the tempo and the pace of the game with the run game. Gardner Minshew has been a solid backup everywhere he's gone. I have respect for the player that he is. Dating back, man, to do is at ECU, went to Washington State, love what he did with Mike Leach. Like, who couldn't be a Gardner Minshew fan? But he's not a top tier quarterback. He's just another guy. There's a reason why he's not a starter in this league. The Panthers have to make him be the one that beats him. Now, there's some players like Josh Downs, and I'm a North Carolina fan, so I love Josh Downs. I think he's going to be a good player for y'all. You can't let Josh Downs get deep on you like he did last week. You can't like Michael Pittman do the things he's done. And Frank Reich, of course, understands the kind of weaponry that they have on that offense. So the Panthers really got to stop the run and force Gardner Minshew to be the one to beat you. If he throws for 300 yards, it sucks, but it's better than getting – a team that run for 200 yards on you on Sunday. So that's what the Panthers need to do if they want to win this game on Sunday. Looking over at the line for our friends over at FanDuel, official betting partner here on Locked On, it is a two and a half point spread. And the Colts are favored. The Carolina Panthers, once again, underdogs here in 2023. Zach, do you have a pick? Do you make a pick on crossover Thursdays or are you not going to do it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have the Colts winning this one, but I think it's going to be a shootout, which... I think Panthers fans would kind of take it this not the loss, obviously, but a shootout game, seeing your offense score some points. Um, I think it's going to be entertainment. Yes. Yeah. Entertainment. Right. I have 31, 27 Colts. I just think it's going to be a high scoring game because I don't think either defense in this matchup can stop the run. And I don't even think either defense can stop the pass either. <laughs> in this matchup. So I really think it comes down to which offense like takes fewer sacks and turns the ball over less, which the again, the Colts might turn the ball over more. They've done that quite a bit the last couple of weeks. Uh, but I do trust the Colts defensive line to get a couple more sacks than the Panthers defensive line in this one. So again, kind of splitting hairs in this matchup, but I have Colts 31 over the Panthers 27. Uh, but yeah, I do think it's going to be more of a shootout game because I just don't trust either of these defenses in this matchup at all. Yeah, I would also bet on the Colts having more sacks than the Panthers just because of what I've seen from this offensive line, uh, primarily Kiyokwana so far this season. Uh, but it'll be interesting. It's good that you bring up turnovers. The Panthers have not been great when it comes to takeaways. They have six so far this season. They got their first forced fumble of the season last week, and that led to a field goal. And that was really the difference for the Panthers. So when they don't turn the ball over, they have a chance to win, especially when they're able to create turnovers. That will obviously be a big factor in this game. I, I don't think you can really undersell just the advantage to think that Frank Reich and his coaching staff has just over the fact that he knows the personnel over there. He hired Gus Bradley to be his defensive coordinator. He knows what kind of scheme he wants to run. And so all week long, I think they've been at the advantage as far as just scheming. And it'll be interesting to see what this game looks like. I had a listener last week because I don't typically – you know, give picks because I'm a coward, Zach. I just, <laughs> I, I just don't want to open up uh, myself for, for. I might someone. be an O for this year. I might be an O for this year. I don't even know what my picks were. Looking back, I, I might have zero correct this year. So I get what you're saying. <laughs> I would have, I would have projected they would have gone two and four to start the season. So I definitely would have been all, wrong in all those as well. Well, there's a couple of games I thought they were going to lose, but either way, um, I. Just don't need someone being like, oh, yeah, man, you picked the Panthers to lose. What the hell? But last week, I decided, you know what? I got a gut feeling the Panthers are going to win. Had some guy coming on DMs being like, look, man, if they win this game, you have to start making picks every single week. So because the Panthers won and I had a pick last week, I'm going to make a pick again this week. I think the Panthers cover, and I think the Panthers win. So I And I just felt like coming out of the bye week, this was a chance for the team to really start to stack some wins. It would have been nice had they won a game or two instead of going 0-6 to start the season to where they would have been positioned to actually contend in the division, which could still maybe be on the table. We'll see how things go. Got to win on Sunday first. But I do think this is a game that Carolina will be able to build off the momentum from last week. It's a defense that's right for the taking, as we've discussed. And, you know, the Panthers' defense is also right for the taking. So we'll see uh, how that works out. But I think it will be an entertaining game. I, I think this will be scored – 
in the 20s, which would be a lot more entertaining than the 15-13 game we saw last week here in Charlotte. But uh, that's going to wrap up this Locked On NFL crossover edition of Locked On Panthers and Locked On Colts. Again, I'm Julian Council, the host of Locked On Panthers. Follow me on Twitter at Julian Council. He's Zach Hicks, a Hicks of Locked On Colts. Follow me on Twitter at Zach Hicks. Two, and be sure to check out our podcast over on YouTube where it's free. And also, wherever you listen to your podcast, it's free and available everywhere. So check those shows out on Friday. I know I'll be talking about my keys to victory on Lockdown Colts. Zach, what do you guys got cooked up for your listeners on Friday afternoon or whenever people listen? Yeah, no, same thing. Keys to victory and talking about what we need to see from the offense. And again, the defense, Like I don't know if we need to talk even more about it, but the defense as well. And then obviously our score predictions as a tandem there. Um, but yeah, no, should be a fun one. Hopefully a fun one. Again, I don't trust either of these defenses, so I do expect it to be pretty high scoring. <laughs> It's not a Frank Reich revenge game. He says, though, that he's highly motivated, and we'll see how it works out as the Panthers welcome the Colts at 4 o'clock on Sunday here in Uptown Charlotte. Again, it's going to conclude Locked On Panthers and Locked On Colts. Thanks, everyone, so much for tuning in wherever you listen and watch the show.